uh, recording has started. It is 6.02 p.m. I am calling the regular meeting of the CV Fiber uh, Board to order. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? And hold on a second, I need to move this to a different screen. Will that do? Yeah, that'll do. Okay, all right, there's that. I'm not seeing, I need people's hands, that's what I need to see. Alan, did I need to add you to the agenda? No. Okay. Um, is there any public comment? Do you need a motion to approve the agenda, Siobhan? Uh, no, I do not need a motion to approve the agenda. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, not seeing any public comment. I'm going to move on to the meeting minutes approval. Jeremy, do you have a motion for me? Yeah, motion to approve the March 14th, 2020 uh, three meeting minutes uh, as drafted. I will move to accept the minutes as drafted. That's RD. I'd like to make a correction if I could. Second. Okay, just a moment. We have a motion made by Jeremy, seconded by, I believe that was Chuck. Tom. Tom, sorry, Tom. And Michael has a, a, a change. Go ahead, Michael. Uh, it just wasn't noted that I was absent at the last meeting. Okay, um, I will. So for the meeting minutes, um, I don't. Oh, how did that get in there? I will change that. I, I have not been saying specifically who is absent um, okay. in the well, meeting I, minutes. I know, yeah, I just noticed um, there were a couple people mentioned in these yeah. minutes. Yeah, that that that's a good catch. Um, I need to remove that because that is not um, not accurate. There are a lot more people than just you uh, who didn't attend. Okay. Um, that's that's something that I do for committees. Um, but you know, because a lot of times it's much much closer to quorum. Um, but I do a different thing for the uh, for the governing board. I have that um, attendance for the town representation uh, sheet. Mm -hmm. um, and I will talk to uh, Sybil, um, our minute taker, and, and let her know that we don't do absent for this. Okay. So okay. my apologize for the confusion. Alan, your hand is up. Go ahead. Yeah, Jeremy, you did get those two small corrections that I sent you, right? Um, I believe I did and then sent out a revised version. Okay. The, the most important of them was the, uh, was the, was the date of the meeting had to be corrected and as long as you did that then you probably did the other the other small yeah. thing that was in there yep okay. the version that great. i have um is is march 14th okay great thanks there's a number of back and forth on this one and, and i'll try to um check a little bit more closely and make sure that they're they're better before i send them out to the board um, i apologize i'm really really busy right now and um Okay, is there any more discussion about the motion to approve the minutes as amended and suggested for change? RD, go ahead. I just want to um, request that you record my vote as abstained since I was not present at the meeting. Okay. <clears throat> so are there any objections to approving the motion? And I don't hear any objections. We have one abstention of RD. Does anybody else wish to abstain from voting on these minutes? I, I guess I probably should also. I was also absent. Okay, Michael will also abstain. And otherwise the motion passes with the majority. Thank you. Operations manager introduction. That's Lucas. Hi, Lucas. Everybody, this is Lucas. He's our new operations manager. He started Hi, this week, last week. You started last week, didn't you? Why don't you yes, go ahead and talk a little bit, third. Lucas, because I'm boring. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Lucas Stubbs. I live in Williamstown. Um, I've uh, 
been in telecom since 2009, uh, last 10 years with uh, uh, Level 3 slash CenturyLink slash Lumen um, as a technician and a, uh, an outside plant engineer. And uh, lucky enough to jump on with you guys and looking forward to, you know, hopefully getting this, uh, you know, this great thing going and, you know, getting everybody up and, you know, up and online. And I'm certainly going to be one of those, I hope. So... <laughs> Definitely looking forward to that. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so anybody, Lucas uh, has only been here for a week. He's already hit the ground running. Um, we're meeting at the warehouse tomorrow with, with Eustace and NRTC and warehouse management. And uh, we have on the books a meeting with Waitsfield. Um, and Lucas has already been instrumental in helping us pinpoint some of the, the big challenges that we have and maybe uh, some solutions that we could implement so welcome lucas it's it's really wonderful to have you here thank you very much good to be here yes okay all right so we will move on to the treasurer's report lori beth or ray um, okay ray sent you the um various reports that we had we had gone over and discussed some of the things on them um at a prior meeting and then a a private meeting he and I had um, because we were con there was confusion as to where the rent for the warehouse went and the utilities and those are under uh, been listed under pre-construction and I'm not sure if they want to keep it there or not but that's one of the things we discussed um, in that in that two different meetings we had. So, Lori Beth, how about if I go through the balance sheet, uh, some of the highlights of the balance sheet, and um, if there's some questions, you'll be more uh, equipped to answer those than than I am. I'm not an accountant, but um, sure. at, at the end of at the end of March, um, we had seven and a half million dollars in the in the bank account, and um, and for the I think almost the first time we're reflecting current assets of 2.8 million dollars for example. Uh, so total current assets of 11.2, uh, fixed assets of 2.8. So total assets of $14 million. And, and this is important uh, when we are uh, interested in finding uh, debt, for example, for additional uh, construction work. Um, let's see, da, 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 da. profit and loss. Um, gross profit. This had to do with uh, grant uh, money coming in. I recognize this ninety thousand dollars here for Town Opera from Northfield, for example. Um, licensing fees and dues. Uh, Janiel, what was the uh, licensing fees and dues uh, that uh, came up with this particular month? Do you recall? Um, Thirty-six thousand dollars. Yeah, so we do we do owe some licensing fees because we got some licenses last year and those are on an annual basis. So that's going to be different than make ready. Yeah. Um, total administration 64,000. Of course, this is before adding a couple more employees. So that number is going to go up. Uh, here's our pre construction for March design services 32,000 make ready services 66. Uh, materials three hundred seventy-six thousand dollars. So you can see that uh, a lot of money was spent this particular month. Uh, the next thing is expenses by vendor. So Calix is uh, to provide the electronics for our uh, OLTs on the optical line terminals, uh, those cabinets that uh, from which the uh, internet will be distributed throughout the district. So that's two hundred forty-six thousand dollars for um, one set of electronics, that's probably the largest that we see here. Power Intel Supply Company, $107,000. Um, we buy materials from them. Mission Broadband is handling our, our poll licensing applications uh, and things like that. Uh, what else? Ray, RD's got his hand up. Um, um, I'm, just, I'm sorry, I don't mean to. I, I, uh, what sort of licensing? What licenses are we paying for? Uh, attachment uh, no, fees. Uh, uh, no before. 
the um, uh, didn't we sign that contract for the cybersecurity? Is that licensing? Oh, there's that too. Yes, that that, that could be part of it too. Yes, the we did sign a contract for no before as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, there could be other licensing as well. Okay, what what is no before? Fees. That's that's no before? security training so software. Okay. Package. Okay, got it. Thank you. Any, any other questions on these uh, on these uh, figures? If not, thank you. Thank you. All right. So the next item on the agenda is budget allocation insurance. Um, this is just a notification uh, about the uh, insurance. We're, there's going to be an increase in the insurance. Uh, we obviously have more materials than we've had in the past. We have more employees than we had in the past. And so our insurance costs are going up. The executive committee takes care of approving these kinds of uh, budget line items. So this is just a notice that we're going from something like 35 to 70,000, something, something along those lines. And that doesn't require board approval. So that's no. just letting us know. Thank you for letting us know. Okay, so then audit update. Yeah, so I can take this. Uh, I met with the auditor on Friday um, at Weschler, and she said that the audit was going great. We had given them some information on inventory and specifically the, the uh, inventory value for each piece of equipment or ma materials we have in stock. And they just wanted to go through some basic questions about how we do business. And um, her impression was that our audit was going well and should be should be done this month. Um, so the the audit update is that we've co complied by supplying all of the required requested information from Weschler as well as from Bonnie Batchelder's office, and they're in the process of reviewing it and going through and completing the audit. Anybody have any questions about that? Okay, uh, construction grant update. The great news was we 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 did receive an approval from the. Vermont Community Broadband Board yesterday on $1.9 million of grant allocation funds to keep us afloat, keep the lights on, purchase some materials. As we went through in that spreadsheet, we put out some significant funds for long lead, uh, long lead time items. So those items, administrative costs will will be funded through the additional 1.9 that was received, uh, approved yesterday. Henry has a question. Go ahead, Henry. Oh, did you take your hand down? No, I was trying to figure out how to uh, clap my hands. Uh, oh. I... <laughs> <laughs> like that. Clap, yeah. clap yeah. acknowledged. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have any other questions or comments? Okay, uh, can sh go, Ray, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that Alan heard that because Alan's in the woods. And and so <laughs> if you're in the woods, you can hear the clap. Yeah, something, something. <laughs> some tree, just tree falls check. down. Run, Alan, run! The tree is falling. So just to was a bear. This, this was the uh, the the last bit of our ARPA funding. Sorry, I'm trying to get the minutes, and I got a little behind on. Oh, that was, grant, yeah. that was a yeah, grant. That was a grant. That was a grant from that, BCBB. That is correct. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And construction update. So actually, I'm going to ask Lucas to give the construction update, and I'll fill the gaps in here if um, if you want me to, Lucas. <laughs> but uh, you want to you want to take a stab at, uh, at at the construction update? Sure. <clears throat> um, I don't think we got an updated mileage today, did we? From uh, from NRTC? Not today. But, uh, no. No. Last uh, we heard, we're at about what uh, ten miles of. Fiber built and 14 miles of strand. I think that was. Let me let me see what numbers they gave me last. Um, la so we, we're we're working now on trying to get a real time update for our um, for our uh, construction as it goes. But they they say they said yeah I think 10 is probably pretty close by now. I think on Friday they had 9.4. So I, I think that's probably about right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, and we are meeting with Usus tomorrow at the warehouse um, and hoping to uh, get a good game playing with them to speed things up a little bit. Um, you know, I know we want to be at about three miles a week right now once, you know, roads clear out and the mud season dries up a little bit more. Um, day, so we're going to ask them. Uh, three miles I'm sorry, a day, day. what I say a week? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so hopefully we will be able to get on the same page with Usus tomorrow. Uh, they're sending one of their vice presidents over. So that'll be a good conversation to have. Um you know, one of our holdups has been the Callus OLT, in which we have an on-site meeting Friday morning uh, with hopefully all parties involved so we can get a game plan by the end of that meeting uh, with Washington Electric and Belco and NRTC and myself. Um, so, you know, hopefully by the end of this week, we have a lot clearer picture on uh, turning up Callus <clears throat> and, uh, you know, getting a better understanding about of what we can expect going forward from Eustis and, uh, you know, getting everything in the air and ready to turn up. I know we also have the RFPs that we're hoping to have by the end of the week, right? Um, which will light up these cabinets. Um, so we're hoping to have multiple, you know, multiple bids in on those and, and have options. But, you know, a lot of these really remote places could be interesting to, uh, to see who's available and who can help us out. So um, I guess a lot going on by the end of the week. Thank Does anybody you. have any questions or anything to add to that? So do we have a uh, an estimate of when the OLT might be ready to light? Well, that's going to be tough because we need to get the information in the drawings <clears throat> into the Agency of Natural Resources first, and then there's a 14-day comment or review period after that. So um, if we get all of the drawings done by next week, we're looking at the end of the month for the approval of the ANR uh, of the drawings. Just just being realistic here, you know, I mean, we're going to we're going to have to get our, our permit probably by the end of the month, the beginning of May, if we're being realistic about it. John Walters asked in chat that he has almost 15 miles of fiber in the pending front porch forum post. Is that wrong? Um, yes, yeah, so so as of last week, um, there could be some informal updates, but uh, but the formal updates from N NRTC that come out on Friday, we haven't received anything more than that. So I would say I would say um, it, it's closer to ten formally, even though they put some in the air. We don't have it officially approved for, through from NRTC besides what we got last week. But maybe by the end of this week, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and they've been averaging about three miles a week. Um, and as as Lucas said, we're aiming to get uh, three miles a day. So um, once they get more troops on the ground, we should be looking at an increase. It's been a little slow go because of the mud season, um, and they've been trying to get um, lighter trucks out there to to hang. Okay. And Tom Fisher has a hand up. Go ahead, Tom. Thinking back uh, to plans almost a year ago now, we were talking about uh, how Washington Electric Co-op had a area in Calus um, that we were going to, the area line was going to get sent to early before the rest of our build. Is that included in our 15 or 10 miles or whatever we're counting? Or has that work been done? I'm, I'm not sure if that's even part of this picture anymore or not. Yeah, so I'm not sure what that is. That I, I, what that I'm not sure that they were going to hang early fiber. That's that wasn't part of the plan. Maybe we're thinking about delivering and storing fiber at WEC because we certainly were doing that. I, it was it was to run from the East Montpelier downtown um, up to the Washington Electric um, transfer station or something in in Calus. Yeah, and nothing like that was ever done. Um, the only scope of work that has been released for any fiber hanging is that one to Eustis for the Calix, uh, for the Calis um, DA. So there hasn't been any additional fiber hung in Montpelier, East Montpelier. Tom, I think David Healy might be able to give you um, uh, a clearer explanation of that particular bit that you're talking about. And of course, David's in Ireland, so he's not much help. But enjoying yourself. How, how dare we that's take a, a vacation? That's on the record. <laughs> David Healy, not much help. <laughs> Do we have any more comments or questions? 
Okay, next up is website update. Is that you, Linda? Or Janiel? Or no, that's Chuck. Chuck! <laughs> I don't want to hear from I, Chuck. Uh, Neil, do you want to start or do you want me to just go right into it? Well, I, I mean, I can queue you up. We, we're working on two things on the website. Uh, we're working on the subscription interface with uh, Crowd Fiber so that people can sign up. And then we're working on the front end to uh, to put up the subscriptions and also some additional offerings that we we have on the WordPress. So we, we're working with CodeWriter on that for WordPress and we're working with um, Crowd Fiber um, on the integration part for the subscribers. And um, Chuck, you can provide better context. Yeah, sure. Um, so the, there are a couple of elements to this. The first element, as uh, Janiel indicated, is the actual experience through which somebody can truly subscribe uh, and indicate that they they want to buy one of our packages, um, and that is managed in Crowd Fiber. Uh, that interface is um, getting closer. We have a little bit of content we need to finalize, particularly on the commercial side of things. We have a couple of um, known bugs we need to work out. Um, and most importantly, while it, it looks pretty good and works pretty well on uh, desktop size browsers, it does not yet look good on mobile browsers. So we have a, a bit more to go there on, uh, on the mobile browser front. Um, we are at this point, unfortunately, well over the, the original 80 hours we originally spec'd. Uh, but we are still under the $5,000 budget that we got approval for. Um, but we are inching our way closer to that budget. So it, it won't be long before we we likely uh, come into that uh, that budget cap um, and either need to reevaluate and, and come back for more money or uh, figure out uh, how, to, how to pivot at that point in time. Um, the other work that is in flight is on the uh, sort of public marketing site, if you will, the site uh, that has the uh, that will be available to the public even if you're not already going through a subscription process. Um, and that is, uh, from a design perspective, much closer. Uh, we still have a couple of uh, sets of the content and how we talk about our packages that need to go through a, an approval process with the communications committee um, and executive committee before we will be ready to release them. Uh, but uh, that that should be happening very, very soon. Um, Linda, looks like you want to add something. We are looking for testers to help us out. If you would like to join our testing team, we would appreciate it very much. We probably need six or so people on this testing team and we would like to start testting probably at the end of the week bonus what kind points of a, if what you kind have of a, oh, sorry ahead, Chuck, i just want to know what kind of a time commitment is the testing thing we will probably ask you to go through uh the the process of registering three times okay however Thanks. Yeah, and and, and that pro that'll probably take like 10, 15 minutes to go through the process and log your findings. That said, um, we would also love to encourage those of you who might have multiple kinds of devices in your household, if and if you can volunteer a little more time to go through it on multiple devices, because we need to test iPads, we need to test mobile phones of different formats, Android, iPhone, uh, we need to test Windows computers, we need to test Mac computers, we need to test, you know, Chrome. Chrome versus Safari versus Firefox. Uh, all of this testing needs to happen. And, and so, you know, when you volunteer, um, if you could indicate whether you have uh, uh, multiple kinds of devices in your household and the time to do more than just one round of testing, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, you can email Linda and myself with, uh, you know, with, with those details. And I, I just want to say a huge shout out to Linda for coordinating this testing. It's a ton, a ton of work. Uh, I unfortunately changed jobs uh, a week and a half ago, and and my world has become a lot more busy than it was prior to that. Um, and so uh, she has really picked up, you know, any any sort of slack. And so I would like to shout that. out for Chuck because he's the <laughs> one doing the the code merge to get us to production. So. I would like to shout out to both of you for all the hard work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any more comments or questions about the website? 
I've been sitting in a lot of these calls with Chuck and Linda, and I can say it is a tremendous amount of work. Every every issue is a rabbit hole, and fixing the crowd fiber spaghetti code has been just insanity. So I, I every every little thing that needs to be tweaked is a rabbit hole. It's amazing. <laughs> Yep. Anything else? I'm going to move on. All right, I'm moving on. Marketing update. I don't even know who that is now. Is that I'll take it. Okay. Um so <laughs> we are we are working toward a direct mailing campaign with Crawford. They've put together a few different images for a postcard mailing um, to go out at phased in, uh, at phase, in, in a phased way so that we have one when um, fiber's coming, one when you can sign up, and then one when it's here. And uh, we also are hiring a community relations manager who is going to be um, – liaising, li being the liaison, liaison between Crawford Communications Committee um, and Public Interface, uh, Crowd Fiber, Waitsfield. Um, so it, we also have a marketing campaign that was developed by Crawford. Uh, we're looking at what to do in the first, the next quarter, and then the following quarter for each piece. We decided to break out the direct mailing campaign because it's uh, something we want to get done now. But we're also looking at some events for the summer and um, getting some booths and doing events uh, at launch and things like that. So we will be putting together a um, a statement of work based on the proposal when we hire our community relations manager. Linda wants to add something. We would like a list of uh, events that are going on this summer in your towns, things like farmers markets and things like that. So um, if you would please send us a list for your town of different uh, community events that go on or um, places where people congregate like uh, the post office or the hardware store or maybe there's only one store in town that they all congregate at. <laughs> anyway, um, those kind of informations will help us to decide where we can put up events when we start going live. So please send us an email. You can send it to Janiel uh, or me, um, and we're going to start collecting those events, mostly summer events. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to recognize myself here. I just wanted to add that I did talk to the people at the Rainbow Center that I work with, and they're very excited about the possibility, and the people who are running the Pride event in Barrie are very excited about the possibility of CV Fiber just even setting up a table there. And so I'll send you the information about that. Isn't is anybody Barry else? The one, I think Barry's the one we've already signed up for the festival. Oh no, this is a different festival. Yes. Yeah. No. This this is Pride, the Pride okay. Festival. Yeah. Did we and sign Montpelier. up for that Barry Heritage Festival? Do we sign we up did. for that? Heritage. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That that yeah. That's through the Barry Partnership. The Pride is a citizens group that is doing that rather than the businesses group. Um, and then the, there's the Montpelier Pride, but I can get you in contact with them as well. So I'll get I'll get those out to you. Is there anybody else got anything else to say? Ray, you look like you want to talk. No, no, I don't. I have enough. Oh, to good. Say okay. Later. Okay. So the next thing on the agenda is committee chairs and officer election notice, which I think means we're not doing that in this meeting, but we're doing it in the next meeting. Yeah, so the the next this is an, this is an important notice actually. Uh, the next meeting is when the board will uh, vote on a chair and the vice chair and the officers, et cetera. Okay, and the other thing that's important here is that uh, they are also going to approve the committee chairs. You may recall there's a two-step process for the committee chairs. Uh, the committees themselves elect a chair, and then the uh, then the board approves the election. Uh, and the uh, of that of that chair, okay. So uh, what that means for the executive committee folks chairs is that between now and the next board meeting uh, in May, that um, you'll need to hold a meeting in which uh, you have an election for the chair. It does not include the vice chair, so that's not something that comes before the board. Questions, comments. 
That means okay. you better be good, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> For a whole month, Linda? I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chuck has his hand up. I will just put it out there that anybody who wants to chair the communications committee is more than welcome to come. <laughs> wow. <laughs> really, Chuck? Handing the baton? We will okay. not let him step down. Are you kidding me? Chuck. <laughs> he wouldn't let me step down last year. I tried. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next thing is credit card authority. So this this is not a uh, this this is just a notice as well. This is not an action item. The executive committee has the authority with regard to um, um, the credit card business, but um, we are going to be getting credit cards. It's hard to believe that we haven't had credit cards to now for folks. Um, in the beginning, the chair and the executive director will have a credit card. Um, the executive committee will approve subsequent um, other folks that might need them, which might include, for example, the operations manager and the community relations manager. Uh, but the executive committee will be taking action on those things. So, any questions or comments on that? Okay, okay. So the next two items are possible executive session, the community relations manager. I'm assuming we will go in. Go ahead, Ray. Yeah, so there were two separate um, statutory rationales for executive session for these next two items. One is a personnel matter. The other is uh, uh, strategies. OK, and so what will happen is we'll go into executive session for the community relations manager, come out and hopefully take some action. Uh, and then we'll go back into executive session and go through the funding uh, materials. And um, uh, so, <clears throat> so that's just the way we'll have to run that. Okay, yeah, that I was actually gonna ask that question. Do we need to have two separate sessions? Yeah. So Ray, yeah. do you have a motion for the it, first it, session? It just so happens I do. That's I'm amazing. Gonna, I'll put it in the, in the chat room. It's like you're psychic. Yeah. Um, move that we enter executive session to consider the employment and evaluation of a public officer or employee in accordance with 1 VSA section 313 alpha 3, and that all delegates, alternates, the executive director are invited as they have information that is needed regarding the employment of a community relations manager in accordance with 1 VSA section 313 Bravo. Uh, now, I, I wanted to, we have alternates and, and delegates and, and the executive director, um, no Second. other staff, and I'm not aware of any other uh, folk who ought to be in attendance. And if you think that you should be, then um, let me know. That would that also includes John Walters as the uh, vice chair of the planning district committee. Yeah. RD. Mo the motion has been made by Ray, seconded by Jeremy. Go ahead, RD. My my only question is is um, <clears throat> um, would Lucas's presence be uh, welcome at the second executive session? Yes, and I've and already told so, him that. I've already told him that, and I'm, I will text him when we come out so he can come back. Thank you. That's why you were checking to see if his phone was on at the beginning. Nice, nice work. I'm telling you, Ray is psychic. That's how <laughs> they, he's just very psychic. No, it's this. It's this. <laughs> <laughs> the magic eight ball. Okay, so I have a motion for us to go to executive session. Is there any more discussion? I'm not seeing any discussion. Do I have any objections to this motion? I am not seeing any objections. Do I have any abstentions? Do I need abstentions? We can put people to the stain, yeah. The motion carries. We are going to be going into executive session with the people who are supposed to leave. Go away now, please. And I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, it is 6.36 p.m. when I am stopping the recording.